Ian Poulter, hero to zero to man baby. Speaking on a No Laying Up podcast recently, John Ram made some serious sense. He was talking about the players who have decided to go to Saudi Arabia for the Open. When questioned about his personal opinion on whether or not these players should go, Ram said the PGA did the right thing letting these players go to it. He said we need to get to space where there are no more petty comments and the PGA product is just put up against the live product and viewers and fans can decide the results. A stand up comment by a PGA man. Today's video however is not about John Ram or a stand up man. It's about a pretty petty man. It is about a pretty petty man baby. Enter Ian Poulter. But first, a quick call to action. If you like this kind of content, please do subscribe to the channel for weekly golf and sports content, including previews, reviews, and picks. We're a small team and a subscription from you would mean so much to us. Now, on to the hero to zero story of England and Europe's Ian Poulter. Ian's story is a roller coaster, really. He turned pro at a four handicap with a bit of a game and a crazy amount of self-confidence. He won a bit and everyone loved him, really, even me. But as he got more popular, he became really, really arrogant and kind of egotistic. Now, a lot of the best golfers are, but Ian went overboard. All of this has led us to where we are now, with Ian disliked by an awful lot of fans, blamed for ruining the game, loved by online robots and making stupid comments on Twitter that people just laugh at. A history. Ian Poulter wrote a book in 2014. Please don't read it. It's absolutely painful. But I tried to read it recently and it gave me the inspiration for this video. Ian's initial story is fascinating and an amazing story of a guy who just loved the game so much that he wouldn't give up. As he was growing up, his boss made him pay full price to play in competitions at the Chessfield Downs Club. Poulter couldn't afford this too much at the time, so his handicap stayed at 4, despite him playing at a crazy high level. He joined the European Tour in 1999 and won the Italian Open in his debut season. Europe and England had found a new young star. He has since won 12 times on the European Tour, and after scoring the most points in the 2004 Ryder Cup, Poulter was offered a PGA Tour card. He happily took it promising to divide his time between the US and Europe, which he did. He won three times in America. In 2008, Poulter had the clubhouse lead of the Open before Porrick Harrington won it by a shot. It's his best finish in a major, but Poulter truly made his name at the Ryder Cup. He played with passion time and time again and became a European hero. He has appeared on the European side six times playfully being nicknamed the Postman because he always delivers. The Postman at the Ryder Cup As an example of his prowess at the Ryder Cup, Poulter remains undefeated in singles. Despite the beating the Europeans took in 2021, Poulter beat Tony Finau 3-2 on the Sunday. He has only ever lost 6 of his 22 match points. No matter his form, he turned up at the Ryder Cup and he was loved for it. Your miracle win at Medina was very much down to him as he raced out to win an unlikely point on Sunday, prompting the European fight back. Medina in 2012 may well have been his finest moment on a golf course. He was a wildcard pick and as the Europeans trailed by 8 points on Sunday, Poulter rallied the team and got out there and won. In 2021, as the young American team viciously took apart the Europeans, Poulter was visibly upset in the end. He honourably stood up and defended his captain, Porrick Harrington, while also coming to the conclusion that that may have been his last time playing on the team. One of Europe's heroes quietly bowing out. This should have been the end he deserved. Widespread recognition of his ventures and safety in the knowledge that he would one day be captain of the European team and his name will go down in history. It is this Ryder Cup legacy that he has decided to destroy by choosing Live Golf. The Ryder Cup has always been the European Tour team 
versus America. In choosing to turn his back on the PGA and DP World Tour, Poulter is destroying an incredibly history at that tournament. The Ryder Cup is the best event in golf, and he had a great chance at the tournament. He was going to be captain in 2025, possibly against Phil Mickelson, but they have both decided to set fire to the past. Why the hate for choosing Live Golf? If you're new to the game and you've just stumbled upon this channel, well you're very welcome. Please subscribe. But you'll be wondering why most people seem to dislike this Live Golf thing. If you're a golf fan, I presume you'll agree with me. Live Golf is trying something that is ruining the professional game that we enjoy watching. And we can pretty honestly say that it's ruining the game just to sports wash Saudi Arabia's reputation. Live Golf claims it is a new exciting product and that it is growing the game, but it's not. It's a sports washing product using crazy amounts of money to hopefully promote Saudi Arabia to very rich Americans and Asians. It has offered ridiculous amounts of money to some of the best golfers in the world and they have taken it, fair enough. The result for us though, the fans, is that we don't get to see all of the best golfers playing the best tournaments. The professional game is absolutely diluted like never before. It's kind of like one of Messi and Ronaldo being taken away from the European football leagues and nobody watching one of them anymore. Wait, where did that happen? What? Regardless of all this, Poulter chose Live Golf last year over the PGA and DP World Tour. He was immediately suspended from the PGA Tour and the DP World Tour have tried to stop him playing on the tour. Again, for the reasons we have discussed. It's just not fair that he gets to take places away from true DP World Tour players. It's so entitled that he has decided to try and sue the DP World Tour too, especially as he grew up on that tour and he owes so much to it. He is only the golfer that he is because that tour gave him the platform. He left it to play less, but wants to play the big tournaments there too. It simply makes no sense and it is here that he is destroying his reputation. Backing Liv all the way to obscurity. Maybe the most controversial thing that Poulter has gotten himself involved with is the fact that he is going to bat for Liv Golf out of nowhere. He now regularly mocks the DP World Tour and players on social media. He also got into a serious war of words with Billy Horschel last year. The tweet recently where he got onto the Ryder Cup Twitter team asking them to wish Sergio Garcia happy birthday on Ian's birthday was just another example of his entitlement. It's hard to see such a legend go this way, but European, European fans just have no time for him anymore. Like a lot of Liv, he speaks because he thinks he's smart. I think this Netflix show is going to show us so much about him and I can't wait to see it. That's all for this video. We don't mean to be openly mocking him, but the last year it's been really difficult to follow with him. It's hard to see these players that we have liked and loved for so long just completely go off a cliff. Then some of the extra things get really annoying. Really for me, I didn't mean to come on here and just keep on mocking him and laugh at some of his past performances and things like that. He's a European hero. And I was, as I was reading through this script, I was actually getting kind of sad and disappointed that he really has just thrown so many things away for himself. He's never going to have his reputation the way it was before. And that is sad. And that's another problem with live golf. And it's something that hopefully, maybe we can reconcile in the future. Anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Please do think of subscribing and we'll catch you in the next one.